Wow. Am I on? Okay, so I'm going to Facebook Live this on Unrestricted Stage as well as my Instagram page. Hi, guys! <laughs> Firstly, thank you, Josh, for calling me. Hi, Ian! Um, thank you, Barry, for organizing this whole campaign idea. It really got me thinking, you know, like we really need to keep each other in check. We need to entertain each other because this is a tough time. If we don't keep ourselves sane, uh, there's a lot of, I, I think I'll put on like 20 kilos if I don't do such things. It's probably the most clothes I've worn in the last five days also. <laughs> but yes, hi, my name is Anusha and I am a storyteller. I like to think so. Uh, of all the years that I have done what I have done, I have finally found one word that represents me, that truly represents me. Okay, so I even made a card that says Anusha Peterson Storyteller. <laughs> well, you either like the card because of the color or <laughs> you understand what storytelling means. Some people ask, what, storytelling, what stories are you telling? And I'm like, mm, okay, you don't get it. It's okay. I still love you. <laughs> but yes, uh, my journey has been an extraordinary one. Here I am here today just wanting to share my story, my life story with you in hopes to inspire you. And that word inspiration has been pinging in my head for years now. And how do I... How do I help others? How am I inspired? It's really a journey, okay? So my intention today is really to tell my story in hopes that you find bits and pieces that resonate with your life because we are here for each other, okay? So I have some notes of being the production person that I am. And uh, I want to start off by saying, you know, everybody is made perfectly different and everybody has a purpose a true purpose a true calling in their lives it really depends how you want to understand that for yourself okay um for me it took a long time to to believe in who i was because there was so much annoyance, so many different types of people trying to find themselves out there at the same time. So it took a while for me to do that. And, you know, I heard this podcast today that said, you know, we are all destined for greatness. And it truly resonated with me because we truly are, right? Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, uh, I don't want to be great today. If you do, I think we really need to check you. Call me and we'll find a way to make you great. Um, it's, it truly is. We all want the best for each other. We will all want to succeed in life. Now we have to define what success is. To some people, success is being in the paper. To some people, success is the memory that you leave behind when people talk about you, right? So we have to truly ask ourselves what our purpose is. And, you know, how do we know if it's the right one? I guess that one you have to journey and find out for yourself. But you have to ask yourself, what is my purpose? What are my dreams? Try to understand what you're made of. You know, every inch of your being is you. Listen to yourself. Listen to what your body is telling you because the seeds have been planted. Okay, as you see, my t-shirt says, God is dope. It's my favorite t-shirt and I wear it for all my favorite people and favorite moments. Clearly today is definitely one of them. And, you know, we really have to tune into ourselves and, you know, listen and, and, and find what those dreams are. And once we know those dreams, we identify it, it can change, semi-evolve along the way but they never run far. And this is really based on my experience. And I'm not saying it because I already achieved my dreams. I'm saying it because I've achieved small dreams. Every now and, every now and then, 
every two, three years, every day, every week, there is a small thing to celebrate. And I've realized that that was so, so important, right? And, you know, the key is really being aware of all the seeds that have been planted. And, you know, just enjoy the life, enjoy the journey of, of your life. So I want to tell you my story and you can find the seeds that have been planted within the story. Okay, so here goes. Um, I have been very fortunate and blessed to have an amazingly creative family. <laughs> Everybody in my family is creative. Okay, so it starts there. It started there, actually. Um, and my dad, if you don't know him, he's a musician. Uh, my uncles all play music. They all were in a band together. Uh, they are very artistic and they, they draw, they paint. It, uh, my life growing up was very colorful. Yeah, I didn't grow up in the CEO mentality. I have to decline this because my father's trying to call me. But yes, I didn't, I didn't grow up in the CEO mentality kind of structured family. We were all crazy and we loved it. So little did I know that was what it was. Right, so just growing up for me was just fun, exciting, laughter, lame jokes, all these things, okay? And because my dad's a musician, uh, I was very fortunate to travel with him all around the world, wherever he toured. So at a very young age, I was exposed to art, to creativity, to color, to production, and I just sat there at all these concerts, all these rehearsals, observing what was going on. Didn't have a say, didn't need to have a say. There were great people in front of me. So I just observed the interactions, the color that came out of the music, when it started, when it ended. And watching big shows as I was growing up, being surrounded by the same kind of energy, it was slowly, filling in my veins, you know, I, I, I accepted it and now I understand that was such a blessing. I grew up with so much of culture, traveling, seeing different types of, of people dancing, eating, talking, you know, it just, it really is. It, they say when, when you're a child, your mind, your brain, your body is a sponge, it really is. I didn't realize it until now, just trying to research and do this talk, I realized that your body is really a sponge. It becomes second nature already. So I've traveled and I've learned production at a very young age. So that's one seed, maybe a couple of seeds that have been planted. And then, you know, I also learn mature conversations at a young age. So I was very inquisitive of what was out there. I was always asking questions. A lot of times people say, oh, this girl has come again huh? with her questions. <laughs> and oh my gosh, so much questions, so much talking, yep, 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 yep. But I now am very grateful for it because my dad never ever told me stop questioning, stop talking, stop asking. asking. He just let me go free, do what I want, but there was always boundaries in terms of respect, in terms of showing that respect to the people around me. And clearly everybody was much older, much, much older. So I learned those boundaries at a young age as well. Um, fast forward, my first job, I, well, sorry, before I left school, I was like, there was a pressure of what do you want to do in life? I don't know cook. I love cooking. I wanted to be a chef. And then I realized it was very difficult. At that point, I had no experience. It, it wasn't a passion that was really calling. So I said, okay, let's find a job. And very fortunately, there were so many amazing people around. And Michael Simon offered me my first job on, uh, in ATV on Malaysian Idol. Thank God for Jeremy. Shout out to Jeremy who left to Australia to do his studies, I had that spot to become a production assistant. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what 
was necessary and needed, I just showed up. Michael tried to scare me by saying, you know, it's going to be hard. Like you won't have your time to yourself. Hours are going to be crazy. It didn't register in my head because I saw my dad growing up working so hard that it was part of my nature to also do the same thing. Well, my dad's now 60, coming 64, and he's still working his ass off. Uh, I better not be sitting down on my ass. For this video, I will sit down for a little while. But yes, so I saw that at a, and I was given that opportunity to work. And it was a calling. I never left. I was in television production for 12 years. I started as a production assistant and I left in production as an executive producer. I, if I'm not mistaken, the youngest executive producer in Media Prima. That was a true achievement. Where was that seed? From the day I started traveling with my dad, watching those Chinese tours, the concerts, how detailed they were, how beautiful they were, how they made you as the audience feel. That's the seed. So that's the short goal. That's the, that's the short story arc. Okay. Um, and then it, I went on doing more and more shows. I was so blessed to be able to work with geniuses, amazing people. We had more fun than we did. We thought it was work. I mean, we got a paycheck every month, but we were there for each other. We did what we love, 20 hour days, nonstop, you know, weekends. There was no such thing as weekends for us. It was just work, but it was what we loved to do. And we told stories, we told amazing stories. And throughout my journey in, in television, I learned so much. And one thing that I will remember till today is this story. Um, I think it was 2008. Um, we were doing So You Think You Can Dance. I think it was the second season or the first season. I don't remember. I was a production assistant or assistant producer. I, don't, I, I forget. We were with our cameras. We with our log sheets. We go around looking for profiles and candidates to make stories about. Right? Because the first thing that they teach you in reality show, it is not about the dancing. It is not about singing. Sitting down there at seven, like 18, 19 years old, I'm like, what the hell is this dude talking about? It's a dance show. It's a singing show. No, it's not. It's about the stories. It's about who is singing, who is dancing, and how their life is relevant to the people that is watching, to the audience. So I, I, we did that. I saw this guy, his name was Vish, Vishnu. He was an Indian Bharatanatyam dancer. He walked into registration with his flamboyant outfit, very colorful, and I said, I need to talk to him. Okay, so I went up to him, started a conversation, and we built a friendship and he told us about his story and why he came, yada, yada, yada. He was really good. He made it quite far. Um, and then I remember finding out that uh, we're clearly digging for backstories, right? And finding out what, the, what, what makes this guy so special, right? And then I find out that his father um, is not supportive of his dancing. I guess it's a cultural thing. So it was nothing that we could do in that sense. But we realized as a production team um, that we had a duty to explain his story, his side of the story. So week in, week out, my senior producer then, Zebdi, uh, I think a couple of us, we tried to call his, his father to ask if his father would like to come to watch the show. And he declined week after week. And then Vishnu got eliminated from the show and he went on doing his life. We did too. Uh, and then that was it. I thought that was it. I made a good, good, I built a 
good friendship with his mom because we went to her, their homes and did a profile on them. So, yeah. And then I think it was two years later, I got a call from his mother. I didn't know what, who the number was. It was calling me and she's it's like, you know, um, Anusha, I, I like to call you and invite you to a prayer session. And I was, what prayer session is this? I've not spoken to you in a while, auntie, but hi, how are you? And then she said, this Vishnu had passed. And that just broke my heart. I didn't know what to say. And she, but she said, thank you. And thanks to you and your team. Vishnu got his father's approval to dance. His father actually paid for his studies to go overseas and to continue dancing. To me, at that moment, I knew what we were doing. We were doing the right thing. This is why I joined television. I used to watch television back in the day when television was scheduled. <laughs> um, and I used to watch and look at all these stories and how they change people's lives. And I was so proud to be part of that story. That was why I did television. And it will always have a special place in my heart. Vishnu will always have a special place in my heart. And I believe as a team, we made so many dreams come true. So to me, the art of storytelling is so important. And your intention and what you want to do and how you want to change lives, that has to really resonate and really show out. Because if it's fake, you can smell you mile away, right? So that was one of my most memorable moments of television. Um, that storytelling seed was planted when I was young, asking all these questions. Hi, what's your name? How are you? What are you doing? You know, and, and not be shot down and say, no, it's the wrong thing. Keep quiet, sit in the corner, you know. So I'm very grateful to everybody who, who had the patience with me <laughs> and my father who entertained my questions. Right, that is a small seed. So one more seed planted, okay. And then... When I was young, I'd come back from school watching television and I used to tune in, I think it was like at 1.30, the Oprah Winfrey Show, who wants the Oprah Winfrey Show? Everybody gets a book, everybody gets a car. Yeah, I used to love that show, okay? I was like, one day I want to become like her. Didn't know what she was, a host. No, I don't want to be a host. I want to change lives. So... Watching that, as soon as I left school, before even my television career started, I sent, an, uh, I, I sent my CV, my resume, to the Oprah Winfrey show. And guess what? I did not get a response. That was so devastating. I actually sent to Ryan Seacrest Productions because everybody was watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians as well. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> and these names at the end kept popping up, you know, Oprah Winfrey, Harpo Productions, Ryan Seacrest Productions. I was so, it was so inspiring that I said, I will apply. I applied and I did not get anything. I was this 17 year old, 18 year old. What? I didn't know anything. Little did I know that there was, you needed experience for these things. And me being this girl from Malaysia, a country so far away, you don't need, they don't need people like me, right? They've got so many Americans there that are, that are next door that they can hide, okay? So I was so disappointed, but I told myself inside, I said, one day I will make it there, yeah? And one day I will get noticed by them, right? Um, I've not been noticed by them yet. But that dream is still there. Uh, I thought in my little mind that after I left uh, Media Prima in 2016, I, I got an offer to go to the US. I negotiated an offer to go to the US. And I thought that was it. 
this is my dream. I'm going. It was a great experience that two years being with Yonder Music, um, it was really eye-opening. I met so many new people, but the goal was always to go to the US. And I went in and out, but never felt welcomed. And I said, it's okay. And then um, the company didn't work out. It was a startup company, um, but I never gave up on that dream to go came to a point where one day I really literally woke up and said, why can't I do this on my own? We have the technology, we have the, we have everything we need to go. So I negotiated with my dad and said, can I go for six months? And then I, I, I needed some financial help. And I said, okay, I will go with whatever money you can give me. And we negotiated a deal and I said, okay, my visa allows me to go for six months, but I only have funds for three months. Let me go try and build relationships, build connections and do what I need to do to see where, whether it's even a place and a place that I want to be and even in, in an industry that I want to participate in. Right. And I went, in May, May 18th, 2018, I took my flight and I went to New York City. It's one of the best cities in the world. And I went, it was hard. I went with, my, with the best of my intentions, so gung-ho. I went there, had a presentation every time I met somebody, had to put on my A-game face. They're like, you sound Caribbean. No, I am not Caribbean. <laughs> and, you know, I had to push through, pick up the camera again. I left the camera in 2010. I started producing then. I didn't need to carry a camera anymore. I took a camera that I borrowed from a dear friend who allowed me to use his equipment. And I went, I knocked on doors and I said, let me shoot for you. I filmed for you. I'll edit a short piece for you, free of charge. Just my time, just to build that relationship, okay? And then, you know, I was so lonely in that space where you don't know anybody. Where do you go tonight? Walk, go out to a park. Sometimes I stayed in a, my apartment for days, never came out. It was, it was overwhelming. But I went and I put my best foot forward and showed up, showed up, delivered over and beyond. And my three months ended up becoming six months with all the connections and all the, the kind people that were around me, the world is really kind. When you put your best foot forward and you go with the, the purest of intentions, you attract similar people. People come and help you. I was there during Hari Raya and people, random people invited me to their homes. Do you want some Malaysian food? Come, there's curry laksa here. You know, so many people, so many amazing people out there. And I went and then I came back because my visa was going to end. I came back at the end of 2018 saying to myself, now what? What do I do? I was so energized, came back with so much of inspiration, so much of color. Everything's just moving in my head, so complex. I didn't know where to start. And then I was, but then, sorry, rewind a little bit. When I came back, I made sure I set my intention straight. Okay. I said this to myself, I said, I want to be part of the music industry. I want to help the music industry one. I want to give back to my community. And I also want to do concert tours because <laughs> I grew up watching concert tours. So I watched these concert tours and I wanted to be part of it now using my expertise that I've had, right? So the intention was so strong. And as soon as I got back, I think it was three weeks later, I got a call 
to participate in Siti Norhaliza's tour. It was a three city tour, short tour, but for the first time, I, I grew up watching this lady sing when she was in her teens. I grew up watching her and now I am actually producing her concert. Like, what? Wait, where did that come from? Right, and God is still, <laughs> he really is. And I creatively produced that show, I directed that show. It was one of the hardest things to date that I've done because it was not only stressing me out creatively, physically, emotionally, it was very stressful as well. The women, you know, we carry everything inside. <laughs> but I think that's the beauty of it. So I did that. And you see, that seed, that seed was planted when I was 12, 13 years old. Being around in that space of touring, it felt like home. When I was in the stadium, when I heard that first snare hit and the sound check going on, it was like home. I heard that all my life. Nothing was new. It's not scary to me. The only scary thing was, is this show going to be a success? Is the person sitting out on the seat they paid for going to go home being inspired, being touched by That was stressful to me, right? But the seed was planted a long time ago. Um, that was one of the most iconic things and that was literally a year ago to this day. And I'm forever grateful to all the powers that make that happen. It was one of the best things in my life. Changed me, right? So I ask of you, I ask you today, whoever's watching, to dig deep inside and, and ask yourself, what are your dreams? What are your desires? If you don't know, ask and you will receive. It's about questioning yourself. You know, we wake up, we, we, we're born and we like jazz music. We're born and we like pop music. Why is that? Everybody is made different. And you truly need to, to block out all the noise to really really feel your heartbeat, your breath, like you know when you do meditation and yoga, that's when you realize your true purpose. And I have a lot more of dreams, a lot more wants that have not been achieved yet. One that I'm really looking forward to was the story I told you about Oprah. I believe that will happen one day soon. Why I say that is because when I was in high school, imagine that, today it has never been closer. Yeah, I have my US visa, work visa that I applied with the help of many people, but it was approved last month, my O1. It's an extraordinary talent visa. Because I have that visa, I was more confident in going out and asking again now about Oprah. And I met this beautiful lady, her heart, so magical, through a lot of people, through a lot of friends, through a, through a group of friends, a group of strong, powerful women. I met them in Hawaii last year. And this lady was one of them. We had a connection, I felt very, inspired by her story, how she develops business and how she grows and sells business, businesses. And little did I know that she was friends with Oprah, like one degree separation friends with Oprah. Oprah just did her Vision 2020 tour that was in collaboration with Weight Watchers in, in the US. 
And this lady went to two shows. She went to two shows. She not only went to two shows, she took her daughter. She went backstage. She hung out with her. She drank tequila shots with her. Oprah's favorite drink is tequila, by the way. And she was like that with Oprah, rubbing shoulders with Oprah. I'm like, I, I pinched myself. I said, Anusha, if you don't ask, don't be a little bit thick skin and ask, you will regret this for life. So I asked her, I said, can you please connect me with somebody in Oprah's camp at least? You know, we all probably understand that, but please connect me. And her immediate response was, anything for you, darling. Let's chat. Oh my God. What? Who cares about seven or 17? And did that whole apply this through an agency? Thing. I got somebody who knows Oprah's number, <laughs> right? It's going to come. It will come. And I'm still holding that in my heart very strongly. It's to the point that I know what I'm going to wear when I meet Oprah, what shoes I'm going to wear, what the air smells like, what I smell like when I meet Oprah. I'm holding that so close to my heart because I know it will come it will come right so that is on its way and it's something that i've also recently learned how to do manifest manifest my dreams to the point of the color of the the outfit that i'm going to wear where is this meeting going to be feel it feel it and then it will happen and it it is going to happen small joke that I tell all my friends who helped me along the way and you know I say thank you I will thank you in my Oscar speech because I am going to win that one day Oscar Emmy whatever it's it, it just it it's just in my head to think like that because I know I am extraordinary I know you are extraordinary. You need to find your Oprah story. You need to find your Vishnu story. You need to find your Siti Nurhaliza story. If you don't find that, stop. Maybe this quarantine is really good for you because it shuts everything out. You really got to think what you want. Again, we don't wake up every morning saying, I don't want to be great today. We wake up every morning saying, how can we make this day different? What can I do that inspires somebody else? How can I fill my tummy in a happy way? Everything matters. How you think matters, right? So I, I call out to you, be conscious in what you want to do, okay? These key things, these must-haves that you have to apply in your life is, first thing is identify what you want to do. Identify your goals, identify your dreams and desires. Secondly, take action. When you put your best foot forward and when with the best of intentions, being intentional about what you want to do, it will come back, I guarantee you, okay? Next thing is, you got to be consistent. Wake up with that dream in your head every day. I met Nepal's sole billionaire, Binod Chaudhry, three weeks ago. I don't know how that happened. I ended up in Nepal and ended up on his dinner table. Dude, he's a self-made billionaire, probably the first billionaire I've ever met in my life. How many zeros are there again? Nine, I think so. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's something so unfamiliar, but familiar at the same time. And he, I asked him, I said, how did you get here? What kept you going? And he said, to wake up every day with the same dream in your head. Think the same things, be consistent about it, and you, you will really get it. You will really get it, okay? 
that's what four, I guess. <laughs> right? Five. Have a clear picture of what you want. I know I want to live in a few countries at the same time. To other people, why? To me, because I want to and I love it. I want to escape from this place and go to another place and be like a holiday but actually work. I don't want to work my life. I want to do what I love and it be my life. So there's no retirement technically. It's just, it evolves. The dream evolves into something bigger. Day in and day out. Okay? Imagine, picture, draw it out and look at it every day and it will come to you. Okay? And the last thing is to never stop dreaming. You have to dream for it to be a reality. Somebody says, stop being a dreamer and just be normal. No. They need to get out of your life. There's no need. Trust me, I've been there. People that tell, told me, no, nah, you don't need to go. Why you want to go overseas? No need to go overseas. You got everything here. It's exactly why. Because you say I don't need to go. I want to go. This is my life. Right? And I have to shout out to my dad. Like, he never... I'm going to cry now. <laughs> but he never said no. He always supported me. My family was always there for me. I will thank you at my Oscar speech one day. I guarantee you that. Okay. And I do want to read this out to you before I end. Wow, I actually made it this far, Barry. <laughs> I wrote something yesterday and it was literally, I sat on my balcony and I said, what's happening? What is happening today? Right. And the topic was literally 80 days into the new decade, right? And it read, 80 days into the new decade, here I sit on my balcony overlooking the uncommonness, life few and far between. I hear silence between each breath taken, a life peacefully uncertain. Rewind 80 days ago on this same balcony, I stood witnessing fireworks, bright and loud sparks in the sky that amplified the excitement of the expectation for the new dawn. I was ready to take the leap of faith, being intentional with every inch of my being, expecting nothing but abundance and greatness in every aspect of my life. In the past year, I have been learning about consciousness, about manifestation and the power that exudes when the mind, body and spirit are aligned. Being consciously aware is not something easy to practice. It opens up a new door filled with new emotions, actions and consequences, while closing doors that are irrelevant and invaluable to the process. Things that used to matter don't anymore while birthing a perspective that is familiar, yet uncommon. In simple terms, I've gone back to living a basic life, yet my dreams have become bigger. To the point that I'm actually afraid when it does become a reality or all one go. I am, so I need to work on that. <laughs> and it came, one after another, calls, emails, meetings, opportunities, conversations, you name it, expected and unexpected ones. Nothing too small for me to get my hands into. I was grateful. And then it stopped. Caused by a global pandemic, a word I never thought I would use in my narrative, but it has now landed in not just my vocabulary, but the world along with the verbs lockdown, movement restriction orders, and so on. We will also discover more new words. And ah, the world is closed. Governments are put to the test on how they handle and look after their citizens. People are tested in the law of common sense. Yes, 
common sense is not so common anymore. And humanity is at risk of extinction if we take every action for granted. Believe me, if we do, it will happen. Wow. To me, I said to myself, wow, what an entrance, God. <laughs> I guess we really deviated from your plan to the point that you needed to intervene before it was too late. I am a believer, as you can see. We may not be of the same faith, however, acknowledge that there is a higher power. Whether you believe in the universe, you believe in law of attraction, different. We, I grew up in a culture that is so diverse. We just need to respect each other. Today, I sit and acknowledge that no matter what timeline we put on our lives, our conditioned minds, thoughts and processes, rules and laws implemented, and how much we think we are in control of our lives, we begin. We're merely beings here to fulfill the ultimate goal, here to fulfill His will. Be aware of the seeds that have been planted within your heart. Arts. Take action when you hear your intuition calling, your gut, feel it in your stomach, like, Ugh! yeah, feel it, right? And do not be selfish in being kind, in being loving, as empathy is in our DNA. This is very important, this line. This line I like, I've heard it so many times and I've adopted it, right? Sometimes the journey is the destination. The surrender and trust the process. Destiny will prevail. So just believe in yourselves. Um, go back and really not go back. Just think of what you really want in your life. And come on, greatness is out there. We just it, the box name greatness is out there with your name on it on the side. <laughs> Receiver, just claim it. And I think the world will be a much better place. Okay. Thank you for listening. Oh my gosh, I really made it this far. You see? Anusha, yep, 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 yep. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, everyone who's watching. I really hope it inspires you to do your life right. Okay. Bye. Okay, now I can end Instagram too. Okay, bye. <laughs>